The anxious dream in which one finds oneself nude while in school is something that many of us can relate to. Even if it's just a dream, the shame and misery experienced while in it are extremely humiliating, but it's also really frustrating to show up to school dressed inappropriately. This is something that a young Montana girl understands all too well. A horrible day occurred in late September 2017 for 11 year old Vegas. A student at Billings, Montana's Eileen Johnson Middle School run by Lockwood Schools, Vegas did not have the most magical school years. Contrary to popular opinion, it all started with her choice of clothing. Students and their family were meant to take a snapshot of their educational journey on September 28, 2017, during Lockwood's Picture Day. Students always try to look their best for formal events, and Vegas was no exception. She wore a brand new dress that her sister had given her. She strutted into class in her brand new gray dress adorned with a charming pink flower pattern. Some people thought it was completely unacceptable, even though it was neither low cut nor had a high hem. Vegas had subtly embellished the already demure look with opaque black tights, and the dress had a high collar and fell to the knee. Vegas and her family thought her school photo outfit was perfect. I regret to inform you that not all individuals felt this way. Staff members at the school yanked the kid aside and warned her that what she was wearing was inappropriate for the picture shoot. Lost and bewildered, she failed to comprehend her own error. The girl was cited for a dress code violation. According to Sandra Lynn Baylor, Vegas's grandma, the problem, according to Baylor, was that Vegas's shoulders were showing. Vegas had gone to class before with her shoulders bearing, but this was different. Despite the staff's concerns, Vegas was led to snap pictures in the unsuitable clothing. Nevertheless, following the photo session, they requested that her parents provide other attire for the rest of the event. Vegas was really sad since she had been looking forward to wearing her beautiful dress. She broke down in tears, distressed by the attention being paid to her attire. Fortunately, her grandmother was there to console her and take a picture of the touching occasion. Feeling outraged by the school's actions, Baylor shared a picture of her granddaughter sobbing on Facebook, along with a note that inspired her friends to provide support. The picture of the distressed Vegas and her allegedly contentious outfit quickly gained international news. The Facebook post's caption said, Today, my gorgeous granddaughter Vegas had to follow a clothing code. They advised her to replace the dress that her sister had given her because they found it to be distracting. She wanted to appear adorable because it was picture day. She is 11 years old. In response to the school's attitude, the grandma wrote, If you or your kids think it is distracting, don't look at her. She said that the Lockwood staff was body shaming Vegas for exposing her shoulders. And that the school was at fault. The grandma went on, I had to talk to her, she was crying. Vegas said she does not want to talk about it because it still upsets her. The picture of the 11-year-old tearing up went viral very fast. Receiving thousands of likes and shares on Facebook, what many in the internet community perceived as Lockwood's too strict enforcement of its dress code infuriated them just as much. Many Facebook users contended that the little girl's shoulders being shown was not wrong. Comments such as, I don't understand why this dress would be distracting it's well below our fingertips, ridiculous, along with, I would argue this as a parent, came in. Some were less charitable, leaving notes beneath the picture that said things like, that's messed up, and, have they lost their minds? Many of the irate remarks were aggressively addressed by the grandma, who helped to maintain the heated conversation. The enraged grandmother had other ideas when a tactful Facebook user recommended that Vegas should have been sent back to school to protect her shoulders. She answered, I'm going to send her a few of them. I'm going to make her a witch dress. That will give them something to think about, she announced. The grandma was particularly worried by the fact that, in her opinion, Vegas was not the kind of youngster who would dress outrageously to attract attention. In an interview with the online publication Yahoo Lifestyle in October 2017, she characterized Vegas as a timid girl who doesn't think boys are even interested in her. Shoulders are just shoulders. What's the big deal? She responded. The grandma also took issue with Lockwood's gender politics, saying that if the schoolboys thought that shoulders were unduly sexual, 
then it was their problem, not Vegas. She believed that the boys ought to receive correction from the school administration. Eileen Johnson Middle School, which is part of Lockwood Schools, has been mum on the matter thus far, even while they refrained from offering an explanation for why they asked Vegas to change. They made their point very clear, rules are rules, and no child is exempt from them, no matter how beautiful their clothes. Educational institutions often implement dress codes to ensure the safety of students and to uphold the school's reputation by establishing a standard that all students are expected to fulfill. Even though clothing standards give students a safe space to express themselves within specific limits, they also have the potential to cause friction between families. Even on picture day, children may object strongly to wearing school uniforms which is another option schools explore when trying to prevent confrontations over suitable attire. After watching the first story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Now, let's watch another similar story. While picking up her son from daycare, a young mother sees her son being abducted in front of her eyes. She makes the decision to relocate abroad in order to start over after years of fruitless searching. One evening. Anna, a tired mother from her long day working as an appliance shop salesperson, rushes along as dusk draws near and the humid streets are drenched in the fading light. The darkening sky full of stars, tired feet from standing all day, she walks to the daycare down the crowded sidewalks to pick up her five-year-old son. Brandon, a weird restlessness grips Anna's head, telling her to pick up her speed even as the night breeze whispers over the trees. She murmurs, why did I have to miss the bus today? She missed the bus since it ran earlier than expected due to timetable changes. The cheapest alternative she could afford was to walk from work to the daycare center on the other side of town. She rushes through the night's heat, her expression showing the accumulation of stress as her heart tightens with mounting worry. Her thoughts are filled with frustration from her job particularly the reprimand she received from her supervisor for giving an elderly guy a larger discount on a refrigerator. He always makes money off of me, she murmurs, quickening her steps through the now dark streets. The day I do a good deed, he swears at me. Anna runs so hard that she has excruciating leg pain. She walks briskly for an hour and a half, but when she reaches the corner of the daycare, the peculiar feeling that had been bothering her goes away. Brandon is seated calmly on the bench adjacent to the already closed entrance. When she observes, oh, thank God, she exclaims. Seeming relieved, she lets out a sigh, too happy to conceal her happiness at seeing her kid unharmed. Her voice is sweet and relieved as she cries. Brandon, honey, the young child leaps from the bench and says, mommy, you're here, with excitement at seeing his mother. The happy reunion of a mother and son feels like a beacon of hope in the night. With great pleasure, Brandon picks up his lunchbox and backpack and rushes in the direction of his mother. Despite her fatigue from the voyage, Anna grins lovingly, her heart swells with relief as the unpleasant feeling that had been plaguing her appears to have passed. The serene moment was broken when she watched her son run towards her by an unexpected, horrifying turn of events. As Brandon approached his mother, an automobile quickly entered the scene, putting itself in the way of the mother and son. Dark shadows were cast over the turmoil that was developing by the flickering street lamps. Anna was terrified when the car door opened and a hooded figure stepped out. She let out a choking wail and mumbled a desperation, no, but she was running out of time. The man in the hood quickly seized the child before Anna had a chance to respond. The automobile rushed off without stopping, leaving tire tracks on the asphalt, and Brandon's small hands lost his rucksack when he was pushed into it. As the car sped away, Anna hurriedly chased after it, her ears filled with Brandon's cries as he yelled out for his mother. Her anguish was palpable with each stride as she yelled out, Stop, no, through her watery eyes as she watched the automobile rumble off. The further she was from her son, the more powerless she felt. She yelled out, Brandon, no, but the automobile vanished, plunging the deserted roadway into utter emptiness. In the stillness of the night, Anna's screams for rescue broke through, her voice drowned out by the darkness. 
An unfathomable look of agony was engraved onto her face by the unbearable agony of losing her kid. The feeling of having something so essential chopped off. She realized she had little chance of catching the automobile, but she ran madly nevertheless. And every heartbeat was like a quiet scream. The world around her was hazy, distorted by her anguish and terror. Anna will never forget seeing the abduction of her son in before of her eyes. She had an overwhelming feeling of loss and sadness when she stood on the deserted street after rush hour. The heat of the day hanging in the air. The night felt frigid and devoid of life to Anna. Her frantic steps reverberated across the deserted streets when she dashed back to the daycare. Her voice trembling with panic. She seized Brandon's rucksack and started pounding on the gate wildly, yelling, Open up, my son is in their custody. My son is missing. Startled by the mother's terror, a few of the surviving workers unlocked the gate. It was, what happened, ma'am, that they inquired? Brandon, my son, was abducted. They took my boy, Anna said, her voice trembling with anguish as she met the boy's disappearance. Her wailing screams cut through the darkness. It didn't take long for the sound of sirens to fill the air after the daycare workers promptly contacted the police. The street was suddenly interrupted by the arrival of police cars, their lights whirling wildly in blue and red, as the police officers attempted to reassure the mother. Her heart raced with promises that, in light of the brutal truth, were frail and hollow. Your son will be located. Ma'am, they reassured her that they would not rest until they located him. The pledges to locate Brandon, however, became increasingly hollow as time went by. The little lad was never located. I want my son. In her anguish and hopelessness, Anna sobbed. After months of searching fruitlessly, Anna learned the tragic truth. Her son had been abducted by a criminal group involved in organ trafficking. Anna was so terrified that she remained mired in a never ending nightmare for the remainder of the year. Even with a thorough inquiry, it was concluded in vain, and the matter was closed. But for Anna, the pain persisted as an internal wound that was bleeding profusely. Her life disintegrated from the mundane routine that characterized her as a salesperson. Her once brilliant manner had turned melancholic, and her attempts to resume employment had failed. Although friends and family gave solace, nothing seemed to matter at this point. All that was left of Brandon were his clothes, toys, and pictures, which Anna held onto as though they were her sole remaining connection to her deceased son. She descended farther into a lifeless existence every day. Anna eventually needed to go back to work in order to support herself. She completed her responsibilities without thinking. Her once bright smiles replaced with a blank look. People in her immediate vicinity saw the quiet metamorphosis of a mother who had lost her son. But also her will to live. Anna would lose herself in contemplation of Brandon's destiny on quiet evenings. A persistent darkness an unhealing wound, and an absence that reverberated through her empty heart was the uncertainty. It was four years later. Anna had searched for her son with all of her resources, hiring detectives and spent nearly all of her money on private investigations. But she had come up empty-handed. Every hint suggested that the small kid might have died tragically. If your son is still alive, madam, it truly will be a miracle. The private investigator had stated. Gangs like that don't leave their victims alive, they use everything they can. The evidence was so dismal that Anna's hope started to fade. With nothing else to do, she returned her focus to her task, but she was no longer the lively salesperson of the past. Anna had lost all interest in everything. Her brilliance had been smothered by a chilly shroud of suffering, and she had ceased taking care of herself. She sold just enough to pay her bills. Working as little as possible at her job, something remarkable occurred in the midst of this depressing mood. Do you recall the elderly guy whom Anna had helped the day her son was abducted by offering him a substantial refrigerator discount? After winning the lotto, the man made the decision to remodel his home. When he got back to the appliance store, he saw Anna. He answered, I remember you, dear, insisting that she be the only one to tend to her. That day. You showed me such kindness. I want to pay you back right away. Here, I'm going to buy something substantial, and you'll get the commission. While demonstrating the items to the elderly man, 
Anna related her own heartbreaking account of that dreadful day. After Anna told him her experience, the elderly guy gave her some very wise counsel. He advised her to leave the gloomy environment that had engulfed her and try to start over somewhere else. Your son wouldn't want you to spend the rest of your life in misery. I'm sure, he stated, he would want you to move on and find peace. The man's remarks struck a deep chord with Anna and gave her a ray of hope in her tired heart. He then furnished his home with the best and most expensive furnishings and appliances. Anna's good fortune was so great that her co-workers were shocked by the size of the commission she earned. When Anna got home that evening, she thought back on the sage old man's counsel and, with the substantial quantity of money she had just been given, she made the decision to make a big change for her kid. I'm moving, she proclaimed with determination. Anna decided to go to England after considering her alternatives and doing some research. Her ability to communicate in English allowed her to secure a number of well-paying babysitting jobs in the homes of affluent families. She had enough money from her commission to pay for a ticket and a few months of living expenses in the new nation. Anna went through a number of interviews until a wealthy businessman ultimately hired her. Unaware of what fate had in store for her, she purchased her ticket and set out on her new voyage, in seeking solace and a new beginning. Anna set off on this next phase of her life. She had no idea that the unexpected twists and turns this voyage would take would change her life in ways she could never have imagined. Anna was enchanted by the ostentatious behavior of William, the businessman who had hired her. When she arrived in London, the mansion-like mansion he lived in was an old property. Anna, I am delighted to have you here today, he replied. Anna found herself captivated by the handsome young man's refined demeanor and dazzling good looks as much as he was enchanted by the young woman's stunning beauty. However, the young woman maintained her concentration, her purpose in being there was to work. One day after his son's return from summer camp, William said, he had just one small boy, I think you'll get along very well, he pointed out, let me show you around the house in your new room, come on, this is my wish for you. William, ever the consummate gentleman, showed Anna her newly furnished suite, which looked like a bedroom fit for a princess, and then showed her around the manor and grounds. Their little time together was enough to form a strong bond, when they strolled through the gardens and shared anecdotes. They found they had many interests in common. Nevertheless, Anna kindly reminded herself to keep her distance, considering her reason for moving to London and her responsibilities as a nanny. Despite being enchanted by the man's stories and charisma, Anna still carried the agony of her son's loss and was resolute in her determination to move on in his honor. The following day came, and Anna would finally see William's kid, Tommy. She surprised her new boss with an early morning meal, when he hadn't had one since his wife passed away three years ago. This was the most extravagant meal Tommy and I have had since Rose departed. Much obliged, Anna. He said, it's nice to have someone new in the house, which made Anna feel a little self-conscious and red in the face. Despite only knowing him for a short time, Anna was able to laugh and grin more during their breakfast together than she had in all the years she had been grieving. Then Tommy's presence was announced by the horn of the limousine. In his Boy Scout attire, the little lad hurriedly stepped out of the vehicle. He yelled out at his father. Ah, Tommy has arrived. Should we go see him? Walking Anna to the entrance, William made the suggestion. However, Destiny had other plans for Anna. Her heart stopped beating the second her eyes met Tommy's. Attempting it was futile. William was taken aback by Anna's quiet sobbing when she knelt down and started to cry. The child, who was joyfully racing towards his father, abruptly came to a halt, as if he had beheld an apparition. He fixated on Anna. He walked slowly up to her and spoke the words, Mommy, in astonishment. The sight of his son addressing this woman as, Mother, shocked William. Mommy, it's you. Tommy cried out when he sprinted into Anna's embrace. My darling, Anna screamed, my son, as her emotions took over. Brandon, I am astounded. Their embrace touched William's heart as their tears flowed. His confusion about how Brandon had gotten to his foreign manor gave way to clarity as to what was happening. The day the young boy was abducted from the daycare center provides the reason for the tearful reunion between Tommy and Brandon. 
or rather Anna, with the intention of selling him to a customer who had already paid for him. The crooks had transported him to London. On the day of the transfer, though, Brandon was able to get away by hiding among the throng. The youngster shouted out for assistance, but no one answered until William and Rose, a kind couple, saw him and hurried to help. Because Brandon was American, the couple called the police and looked up any cases of missing children involving him. But they were unable to find any. Because of his recent trauma and inability to talk or give his name, it was challenging to determine Brandon's identification. Tommy was chosen for adoption by the couple when no matching records could be located. Tommy was the realization of William and Rose's long-held desire for children. Especially because Rose was unable to procreate. Tommy was reared by them with all the affection and warmth they could muster. Tommy never forgot his biological mother. But she stayed in the past. He knew Anna was his mother when he saw her with his father. Anna was acknowledged by William as the boy's biological mother. The businessman was even more shocked when Anna went on to describe the terrible events of that day. William granted Anna permission to stay at his home for as long as she required. Acknowledging that the mother needed time to get closure for her son's death. In order to raise Brandon, Anna and William created a close-knit family during this time after falling in love. The young child had always been very close to his adoptive mother Rose, who tragically died of cancer, but he was overjoyed to have his biological mother back in his life. Thus there was happy ending to Anna's sad tale. With her son and her new love, Anna created a new life while battling obstacles. She was incredibly appreciative of all that had happened to her and her progress. Anna, surrounded by her sons and her new husband's love and affection, at last experienced the calm she had been longing for. Despite hardship, the three of them became a family that flourished on love and thankfulness for having discovered each other. Anna and her family went forward, creating a new chapter full of excitement and hope, with a fresh start ahead of them. After watching the stories above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.